Moving on to the next question on the test. So the graph f of x equals 2 to the power of x has been transformed to the function below, so this function here, by a vertical stretch and vertical translation. Find a potential equation for the function below. Okay, so we know that this here was the original function, 2 to the power of x, and then it's been transformed by a vertical stretch and a vertical translation. Now, out of all the transformation values, a, k, d, and c, which one of these deals with a vertical stretch and vertical translation? Well, the a value deals with a vertical stretch, and the c value deals with a vertical translation. So we know the k value is 1, d value is 0, because we're not told of any horizontal stretch or compression or any reflection in the y-axis, and we're not told of any uh, translation left or right. Now we know that if we take this function, transform it, let's call it g of x, the general transformation format is going to be this here. But because we know the k value is 1, the d value is 0, we can just leave x as the exponent. So really, we just have to figure out what that a value, what that c value is from this diagram here. Now, the easiest thing to start with is the c value. Because if you remember the c value, it's the horizontal asymptote of an exponential function. And notice here, it's not fully clear on the graph, but we can pretty much estimate that the horizontal asymptote is going to happen at a y value of 5. Right? Notice how this exponential function, it's approaching that y value of 5, but it's not quite hitting it. So we know the c value is going to be 5, or that's a very good estimate of it. So we could put plus 5 here. And now all we have to do is solve for this a value. Now how can we do that? Well, what you can do is you could pick points on the graph. So you want to pick points that are smooth here. So notice that negative 1 and 4, that's one point. That's fairly obvious. There's an intercept here at 0 and 3. Is there any other points? Well, maybe over here 2 and negative 3. That can work as well. So what you can do is you could take any of these points here and then plug them in for x and y, and then you could solve for that a value. So let's pick 0 and 3. I feel like that's the easiest one to do because that x value is going to be 0. So we would plug in 3 for y. The a we're solving for will have 2 to the power of 0 plus 5. 2 to the power of 0 is just 1. So 1 times a is just a, so we'll have a plus 5 equals 3. When you bring the 5 over, 3 minus 5 gives us negative 2 for a. Right? What if we picked another point? What if we picked negative 1 and 4? So we would plug in 4 over here, and then we would have negative 1. Um, so what would happen then? Well, 2 to the power of negative 1, that's like 1 over 2, so we'd have a over 2 plus 5 equals 4, bring the 5 over, so we'll have negative 1 equals a over 2, and then when we cross multiply and solve for a, we'll get that a value of negative 2 again. So it seems like no matter which point we're picking, we're always going to be getting that a value of negative 2. So we could be pretty confident that that is the correct answer for a, right? So the a value is negative 2, which means there's uh, there's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. It also means it's reflected in the x-axis. Notice they didn't state that, but you could tell here that 2 to the power of x usually looks like this. So you could tell it's been reflected in the x-axis. Anyway, a value is negative 2. So if we plug in negative 2 here, that there is our final answer. That is the equation of that function.